been a while. Welcome back to Quarantine Kitchen, or I guess it's just sitting at home on house arrest at this point. Tonight, I'm making two dishes, um, and there's going to be some more jump cuts as I do them both. So, about a week or so ago, I made delicious, delicious enchiladas, and I want to make them again and show you guys how to make them. But the other thing I'm going to do is, last time I did them with barbacoa, this time I want to do vegetarian. So I'm going to do the meat ones. We're going to get the meat going. That's all getting together on the stove already. And then I'm going to set aside and do some cheese and pepper and potato ones. So, I mean, we could have done just beans, but where's the fun in that? And so to do that, we're going to start off by getting our barbacoa going. Or, I mean, at this point, really, I'm just stewing meat and enchilada sauce. I'll call, call it whatever. Um, so let me take you through what I've prepped, what we're going to use tonight. I'm sure I'll edit up something on screen that's like doing the Star Wars flyby of all the things we're using here. Um, but really, it's not that tough. And to save you guys the hell of waiting while I chop things, I actually have set up my mise en place, and I will take you through that right quick. So to do this, I have shallots and red onions. I have bell peppers and white onions. I have three, uh, I think these are either Pasillas or Fresnos, or maybe a combination of two because they were right next to each other at the grocery store, but three medium-sized peppers. <clears throat> I have a potato, one very big potato, roughly skinned because I wanted a little bit of skin left in it. Uh, on top of that, because I'm lazy, and well, frankly, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, uh, two cans of enchilada sauce, one for each type of filling we're doing, big old thing of beef broth to fill out. Next to that, we've got plenty of garlic, some tortillas, I wanted corn, but corn doesn't roll for anything. So these are a hybrid corn and flour. They still don't roll great, and it works better if I steam them, but it's not so bad. So these are kind of what I found work pretty well without just breaking up right out of, out of the gate. And then on top of that, cotilla and washaka cheese. Um, washaka is going to get used in the peppers. It's nice and melty. It's a lot like mozzarella. It's going to just kind of, and it's going to give us a nice filling. Gautilla is going to be that kind of grainy, dry, very kind of, I don't want to say sharp, but salty cheese that kind of adds to everything. And so between these two, we're going to use up quite a bit of them. And then the last thing we've got, <coughs> excuse me, is about two pounds of chuck roast. And it's been sitting in the fridge with some salt and pepper on it. Nothing too exciting, but I cut it off and got rid of most of the connective muscle there because it's a pain to pick out later. You want to keep as much of the fat as you can, but cube it up and then kind of get as, get rid of as much of the stuff you're not going to, well, all the crap that's in here, <laughs> it's not going to get used. So to start off, we're going to have to start with the, uh, the barbacoa because it's going to go for about two and a half hours. So the plan is, start that cooking, let it just bubble away on a corner, and then break and go to the veggie ones. I may do it as veggie up front, meat on the back when I edit this together. I don't know yet. We'll see what flows. Well, I really, it seems like a lot of work. I, I don't know. You, may get, you guys may just be along for the ride. So we've got a pan, and into that pan we're going to... Get a bunch of oil going and don't be shy I, I mean that was probably a good three glugs um i'd say a quarter cup maybe maybe not maybe not even that much um but just like a, just so the meat doesn't stay and then what we're going to do is we're going to take probably about three cloves of garlic and pay attention to this because we're going to have to do it again when we uh when we go through for the veggie one because i'm going to start that one the same way we're going to take this, we're going to crush it, get rid of the skins, 
So, give it a good hard thwack to break it loose. If I had heavier knives, I'd actually be trying to get more of a smear on this. But that's not such a happening thing here. So, we've got that oil heating up, so I'm kind of a hurry here. Um, this is probably something I could have had done, but I didn't want the garlic to oxidize. Because nobody likes stinky garlic. So we're going to give this a quick, I'm not even going to give it a rough chop. I'm just going to give it kind of a squish and smear just to break it up. And, I don't know. There's some weird compound here that happens when you break up garlic. And I can't remember what it's called. Somebody who watches a lot of VA will know. They always talk about it. Uh, but just a little more skin that didn't want to go away. If you have minced garlic, by all means, use it. I just bought a head of garlic because that's what they had at the grocery store. I'm a big believer in that stuff. So I think the oil is starting to get there. It's not quite shimmering, but it's moving pretty quick. So we kind of want to aim for that kind of shimmering, ready to go oil. And then into that oil, we're just going to drop the garlic. And then, because I'm doing two batches, half of my shallots are So, and then we'll set that aside for now. And I will find something to stir you with. And we're just going to sweat the onions and garlic down so you can smell them a little bit in the room. We're not trying to really cook them. We just want to flavor that oil a bit, if that makes sense. And... Since I cut these up pretty fine, they're already starting to brown. My goal here is not to burn them, just to kind of have some flavor in the pan when we start. So now we're going to drop this in, and we're not trying to cook this all the way through. We just want to get a good sear on it and get some good fond going in the bottom of the pan. Uh, so fond, if you don't know what's up with that, is that kind of brown, sticky stuff that ends up on the bottom of the pan when you're cooking meat. That's where all the flavor lies. Like that, if you... Don't get at least a little bit of a sear on what you're doing. You're leaving a ton of good flavor on the table. And so my goal here is to kind of build up some of those flavor compounds on the bottom and to uh, get this meat slightly just uh, seared. Seared is the word I'm looking for. So I want to get a little bit of a sear going on that meat because it'll add to the flavor it gets later. Uh, but we're going to let this go for a little bit and kind of give it another stir. Like I said, not trying to cook it all the way through, just trying to get it cooked enough. And then we're going to dump in the enchilada sauce, because again, not reinventing the wheel. Um, and when we do that, we're going to drop in a bunch of those white onions. So in this is just water, dried red chili, salt, oil, vinegar, spice, olive oil. It's Nothing really complex, and I'm going to add more to it, so I don't really feel like it's cheating to use this. Because, well, I'd just be making that out of a base anyway. So, I mean, meh. All right. One thing you got to watch out for is if you put too much meat in the pan, like I have here, you can end up actually steaming the meat more than you get a sear on it. So, the two pounds is probably a little much for this pot. But we're getting some nice color to it. And I really need a second camera so I can just like take field trips into the pot here, but it's not gonna happen. Because uh, you know that's money I could be using to work on cars. So we give that another couple seconds. And then to add to that, we're gonna take about half of this box of beef broth. And when we do the veggie ones, we're not gonna worry about that step. We're just gonna use the enchilada sauce. You could use um, veggie broth, but I'm just going to cook it back down anyway. So it seems kind of pointless to me to do that. So with the beef, because I want it to reduce down and thicken up and have enough bulk, I can use water. I can just use, you know, a buck and a half worth of beef broth. And it works pretty well. And on top of that, I've got, um, I've got some, it says garam masala, but it is actually powdered oregano and sweet basil. If you're buying your spices in the fancy McCormick bottles, or I think this one was Trader Joe's originally, at the store, you're a sucker. Um, go over to whatever sections of the store that 
whether they call it ethnic, Hispanic, whatever. Go to the places where people are cooking good food that isn't, you know, French or American or whatever, and the spices get so much cheaper. You know, I can go for, like this guy right here, the El Guapo Paprika. You know, it's like $4 for a thing of paprika or a buck twenty-nine. I just keep my old paprika bottle and I refill it out of piece. Uh, I've never seen powdered oregano except in the in the uh, in the El Guapo section, but I love this stuff. Like on pizza, this is killer. You don't get the flaky bits; you just get that nice flavor to it. The sweet basil is real good like that. All right, so now we've got some fawn going in the bottom of the pan, which we'll be able to scrape off into this, and we're just going to lead with. Our can of sauce. And then it's barely covered right now. So this is why I'm adding the beef broth. The beef broth just gives it bulk to be able to cook down over time. So I'm going to add in, like I said, about half this box. And then the nice thing is, is add a few spices here and there, and we're basically going to forget about this. And the spice bill is frankly optional. I'm just adding flavors I like. So don't feel bad if you don't want to go buy spices or if you just have like, you know, typical oregano in, from like Italian food, whatever. We make it up as we go along. So I'll be adding a little bit of that. And you know what, just for fun, because it was delicious and I got it for Christmas, this Mesa Rosa Chipotle from Urban Accents. Maybe not the most genuine of spices, but it's delicious and smoky. And it'll, it'll do some fun stuff in here. Um, and actually, while I'm throwing good stuff in, I love this stuff. Olos Chipotle paste. Oh, there we go. Let's face it that way. If you can get it, I highly recommend it. Again, these are all optional. I'm just doing it because I'm here and I can't. Don't, don't feel like you got to go spend six bucks on a tube of this to get that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stir all that in. And I'm going to change between burners so I can move this to the back. And then we're going to forget about that. It's 7.30 now. So I'm going to forget about that until, oh, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So I'm not even set. Well, actually, I am going to set a timer. I'm going to set it in the cell phone. And life will go on. Okay. Don't know where my cell phone is. Uh, apparently, I will not be setting it for <laughs> So, at this point, that's going to be the filling for our meat ones. I'm going to let those go, and then we're going to revisit that. We're going to revisit this with uh, the veggie ones. At this point, we're going to start on the veggie ones. And to do that, I've started a pot of water boiling with that potato in it, which is barely out of frame. I can adjust slightly down, but really all you're going to see is the pot going. See the pot? There you go. And move this back up. There we go. So I've got that going, and I've got a broiler set. And I've got a sheet pan here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take our peppers, a little bit of oil so they don't burn, and then we're going to stuff them with cheese, put them on a pan, drop them in the oven to roast them. While that's going on, the potatoes are going to work on boiling because we're going to make a pretty basic smashed potato that I'm just going to grill in a pan to give it some, some texture. We're going to mix all that together, and that'll be our veggie filling. So, I'm, like, like I said earlier, I'm using the either Fresno's or Pasillas. I don't know which. Um, if you're spice averse, you can step it down to something else. You just kind of want a pepper that'll toast up and soften and let some sweetness out. But if you really don't want the heat, find something else to throw in with the cheese. It's really more about the cheese and potatoes. Um, so as we start that going, once we get the potatoes going, which we actually we rephrase that. Once the potatoes keep going, we get the peppers going, I'm going to start the sauce boiling. So we'll see a few jump cuts in here as we go. The next thing we're going to do is slice up some of this cheese and toss it into the peppers. So we're going to give it kind of a first melt. So this is the washaka, and cool. this is the washaka, and I'm just going to cut it into kind of slices. And then, like, yeah, it feels like about a chunk that long. Drop it in that guy. Come on, fit. There we go. Good enough. 
And then that guy gets a chunk. And come on. No, no, no. You can fit. Get in there. No, you want to be in there. Too good for your home? And then just one last little chunk. And apparently I shouldn't be quite so aggressive because it really doesn't want to fit. But this is cool because whatever doesn't fit is just going to melt out in the pan and get nice and gooey and tasty and fun. So there's really no losers here. We'll just scrape it off the pan and put it into what we're doing. Now, we've already gotten this going at 425. Um, I didn't want to do a full broil because I just don't want them to burn to death and because these are gonna get cooked further later. So, hate working with the wet. It gets everywhere. So now this guy is gonna go in here. Must have about a five minute timer on that guy, if I can find the timer button. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Break time. Anyway, we've got that going. That's cooking. And now I'm gonna go on with the rest of the evening. It's been about seven minutes now. And the peppers just beeped at me. They're getting all melty and it's kind of getting crispy on the pan. They're still roasting. They're getting hot, they're getting nice and happy. We got another pan going. And this is what we're gonna throw in the enchilada sauce going in and producing for a little while while the potatoes boil. So while I was off screen, I smashy smashy choppy choppy some garlic. And we've got the rest of our shallots. And it's time to toss them in a little bit of oil. So I've got this pot going here. And a little more oil. So take my smashy, smashy, choppy, choppy garlic. We hear it sizzling a little bit. This oil's not quite as warm as the last one was. Take the rest of these shallots. Just drop them in there. And at this point, I think the peppers are starting to char a little bit, but the cheese is getting ahead of them. So we may have to pull those out a little early. Turns out, um, yeah, potatoes boil better if the burner is on. So I think we're gonna have to take a pause here while everything catches up with everything. <laughs> Luckily, the enchilada sauce will largely take care of itself. But, um, yeah, I was wondering why those were taking so long to cook. Whoops. So, while we're waiting on that, these white onions, uh, I had them. I was using them just because I got to get them out of the fridge. This is a fully optional step. But now that this has been going for a while, I'm going to drop about half of these in there. And, you know, again, like I said, this was more because I had to use it. Really, these are more there to cook in the pan than anything when we're done. And I need the red onions more for that. So at this point, I still have the peppers, which again are going to be exterior garnish and kind of cooked into the sauce at the end, so they still have some toothsomeness to them. The red onions, a little bit of white onion left, and we're kind of running out of ingredients here. Let's so start to take on a little bit of color here. It's time to turn that guy down a little. We're gonna add the enchilada sauce, or enchilada sauce, sorry. That Saturday Night Live skit. And then we're gonna let that guy cook down. We'll find a lid for that over behind the camera somewhere. And we've got cheese, we've got onions, we've got shallots. So this sauce is going to come up to a boil and we're just gonna let it cook down and thicken up and get delicious. And then really, it can go as long as we need, because we're going to be waiting on potatoes. So, we've added that, we've added that. We're about to pull some peppers, just because the cheese is getting real, real melty. But, we have lightly toasty lots of cheese, which will be nice, all grilled and tasty. Also, that pan's kind of hot through only uh, one layer of tallow underneath, and it's been at 425. So, I'm going to put this down, but as you can see, we're starting to get some browning on the peppers, and they're softening up. Son of a gun. That was that was a warp. At this point, the potatoes are boiled. The veggie enchilada sauce is going. While you guys were sitting in no man's land, limbo, whatever you want to call it, on a commercial break, I actually
actually went and added some oregano and some basil to that sauce because I forgot to do it on video earlier. The meat sauce is going and that's just bubbling away. So right now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the next step on the veggie filling. So while y'all were gone, I took those peppers and I cubed them up with the cheese that was all pan baked and crunchy and crispy and delicious. And I added just a little bit more of the Lashaka cheese just for proportion. Um, so I added about another two ounces to what I had there. I'd say I've used probably, that was a 10 ounce block. I've used six ounces so far. Um, so I've got that going. I've got a little bit of cotilla crumbled up here. And now we're gonna start the potato filling. So, hot potatoes, colander. So now, I'm just gonna dump those guys into the, uh, into the pan that we're gonna brown them in, just to make them crispy and crunchy and delicious. Somewhere in here, I have something appropriate and smashy. Smashy, it's a giant smashy smashy. So we're just gonna make, basically, I mean, kind of like you'd make breakfast potatoes out of these, just a rough, crunch them up a little bit. Nothing too exciting. So now we've got a hot burner, well, we will have a hot burner. We're gonna take a little bit of ba -ba 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 black pepper because these potatoes need some love. And we're gonna add a little bit of optional red pepper flake, just because it's there and it seems like a good idea. Add some flavor to these guys. And da -da 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 -da. the fancy salt. I think it means it's working. So, we're gonna let those get a little bit of crispy going on them. Um, I didn't oil this pan. I'm just gonna let those potatoes go for a little bit here. And I realize we're gonna give up a little bit on the bottom of the pan when they're ready. Um, I don't quite wanna add the potatoes and the, or sorry, the peppers and the cheese to that yet, because I wanna get a little bit of texture on the potatoes. So at this point, we're nearly ready for assembly once this, once this toasts up a little bit. And I think we're gonna take a field trip just so you guys can see what's going on in the pans. So up we go and prepare to never be framed properly again for this video. So at this point, we have a stove full of deliciousness and it's probably gonna burn me if I do that. So right now we got bubbling red sauce. This is our veggie sauce. So there's some onions I dropped in there just cause I had them. Um, the leftovers from this one, all the spices I put in, basically what you saw me do earlier. Gotta love it, the steamy lids just breaking in here. And then that's our meat. So that will become the, uh, the barbacoa one. But we've still got another, I started at what, seven? No, started at 7.30. So uh, we're about an hour in now. And I'm just gonna let that keep going. We're gonna let the heat stay in it this time. And then we're gonna let these potatoes brown up. And then, oh, I have run out of cable, but wait. Here I come to save the day. There we go. All right. So then we've got all of our ingredients over here. I'm going to give the, these guys about probably another four or five minutes to cook, get some browning on one side, get them to char up, because again, we want that, that Maillard effect going on these. And then we will go through and we will start assembling. And now it's time for assembly part one. So we've got our pan. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got our tortillas. I've got my potatoes. I've got my filling. I've got some onions, some peppers. And the first thing we do is we take our enchilada sauce and we drop a bunch in the bottom of the pan. And kind of like if you're doing a pizza, uh, just kind of spread it amongst the bottom there. No need to be too careful about it. But you do that just to keep these from burning to the bottom of the pan. So, on top of that, if you want to, toss some onion. There you go. Toss some more pepper. 
and then toss that little extra piece of onion. And all we're going to do is just start assembling. A little bit of potato, a little bit of pepper and cheese, a little sprinkle of cutia on top, very carefully roll, and place in your pan. And I think I'm only be able to fit like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine in here. So I should have plenty of ingredients. Apparently I'm having potatoes for breakfast tomorrow. Um, but all we gotta do is do that as many more times as we can fit them in the pan. So again, spoonful of toasty potato. That one had some nice toast on it. I'm happy with that one. Spoonful of tasty pepper mix. Let's get some more pepper in there. Less cheese, more pepper. Ah. Okay, well, apparently that one's going to be lots of pepper. Um, and I actually tried these peppers earlier. They're not mega spicy. Um, they're probably above kid level, but they're very, very far sub jalapeno. They're not spicy at all. That's three. We'll pack those guys up tight on each other. Try and get eight in here. Toasty cheese in there. That's probably too much potato. Let's go a long ways. All right, and almost did it again. And I like this because I made sure to get like some crispies from both the pan cheese and from the potatoes. So they won't just be mush. You know, that's kind of the goal of why we've just been cooking everything on the way in because nobody enjoys eating mush. Mush is no fun. So that's four right. so. proportion can be a little bit of a challenge i'm still learning my way through that that's three six we're gonna be able to fit seven this way add a little more potato no ah that was perfectly good cheese it just went away words i never thought i'd say everybody knows i don't really like cheese ah uh, I thought these were a dozen to a pack. These apparently are two, four, six, eight, nine. Wait, two, four, six, seven. What do you know? Eight to a pack. All right, well, this works. Because we will improvise. And I mean, frankly, there should be plenty of them. So I'll have some potatoes for tomorrow. I'll have some of this veggie cheese mixture. Leftover. I'm, I'm gonna be eating this all week. It's gonna be, gonna be a stellar food week. So now we're gonna take that last roll, kick him over here on the side where he can be happy by himself and kind of, kind of big and lumpy. Uh, drop some more of these guys on top. Cook in the sauce. Plenty of cheese. Well, let's grind up some more of that. What I like about using this is it adds um, a real nice depth of flavor to things that I didn't expect with how I boiled them all together. So, considering this is all just kind of a boiled together sauce. And speaking of which, now we just take the rest of that sauce and we cover the top with it. And suddenly, we have a whole heap of delicious food. For now, I'm going to put you on pause, clean some kitchen, and come back when these come out of the oven in 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, and we now have one very hot dish of enchiladas. But they look awesome. And I'm just going to pull one off the edge here so we can see and share this together. Because like I said, I have not actually made this vegetarian version before. This was just like me doing an experiment. I'd only done the, uh, the beef ones before. So we're going to grab a little bit more of this and 
Sorry about the binging. Um, I'm, it's, uh, the laptop has decided it's going to bing through my phone while I'm recording. So, you know, I'm not going to bother reshooting it. I'm just going to go, meh. So, you know, it's no fun if we, if we actually were to, you know, edit this or anything. Like, where would the fun in that be? So, now we're back to our improperly framed starting position. Because I can. And we have our fancy pants enchilada. It is full of potatoy goodness and peppers and melty, melty cheese. Mm hmm. Normally I don't do the taste test, but you know, it's like 9 30 and I'm hungry. So. No, by all means, this is this is awesome. I am loving the potatoes. I will be having more of those potato, all this filling that's left over, I will be having for breakfast tomorrow because I made more than I could fit in there. So, step one of two, complete. I wasn't planning to do an update after I assembled the meat ones. Um, I finished the veggie ones earlier and I just built my eight meat ones. But it's really interesting, and I wanted you to be able to see kind of the difference in color and sheen that comes from doing the veggie ones versus the meat ones. So I ended up with extra meat. Uh, this was about two pounds of meat. I'll just throw it on top, it'll be delicious. But because there's so much more fat in this that the veggie one doesn't have, the sauce comes out completely, completely differently. And so I'm actually, I'm a really, really big fan of the veggie ones, but the meat ones are going to be different looking. And I wanted to show that to you um, before I put these in the oven and gave you the final on these in about a half an hour. So I'm just kind of using up the rest of my cotilla here. The rest of my ingredients that I had sitting around. Because, you know, you might as well toast up some nice tasty veggies on here. The rest of my peppers. I think I'm going to keep that extra Oaxaca for quesadillas because, oh man, I love how that melts. Um, I'm a real big fan. It's not a cheese I normally buy because, well, frankly, I don't buy a lot of cheese. But, yeah. So, I'm just going to take and Throw some extra meat on top of here because, you know, why not? It'll get all crispy and toasty in the oven, maybe. Or maybe it'll be covered in sauce. We'll see. So, do some of that. And, well, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to save that and eat that for snack, I guess, or lunch tomorrow or something. So, but we'll give you a quick A-B here. So, strangely, these have been out for about 40 minutes. And this pan, you'll notice... Kind of, it's flat. There's not a lot of sheen. It's delicious. It's tasty. I already ate one of them. <laughs> but I'm going to go through here with the meatier meat sauce. And, I mean, yes, there, because there's more oil in it, when you cover this up, when it's done cooking, it's going to have a completely different color to what's going on, but I don't think I need any more than that. That's that's pushing it a little bit. So that's that's beyond the, the bounds of good health. So at this point now that these are covered, they're gonna go in the oven and I'll give you an update when they're done, but the A B between the two needed to be seen. If you're looking at the clock right now, ignore it. It's not lying. You just you don't want to see it. So I ended up letting the beef cook about a half hour longer than I intended to. And it's just now set up, coming out of the oven. And yeah, so we're gonna see this for the first time together. So those are the beef ones. And what's up on top seems to have kind of come out in a similar, similar shape as what's down low. But if you look at what's floating down the side, it's definitely, definitely a juicier setup, I guess, is what I would say. 
So, where are we go? Vegetarian? Not vegetarian. Taking one off, just like I did before. Got a little bit of that nice, just flaky pull apart. Land on the floor beef. Oh well. It's really soft, tasty, delicious. And the difference with these is they're much less complicated inside. They're literally just meat and cooked in. So, get a little bit of tasty tortilla. Some of the floaty veggies. A whole bunch of what's now been three and a half hours cooked, plus another half hour in the oven, getting tasty in these. Uh, beef. Yeah, you don't even, you, you, it doesn't even need to be chewed. <laughs> the tortillas are stiffer than, than the, uh, the meat is. All told, really happy, really fun. Yeah, like days worth of tasty food now. So, cheers, y'all.